What's going on, Duff Daddies and Duff Mamas? It is Thursday, March 25th, and this is a very special midweek episode of the Duff and Up podcast. I am your host, Brendan Monroe. Sitting alongside me right now are my two co-hosts, Michael Adams. Michael, how are you doing this evening? Ready to go, Brendan. Really excited for this week. And to all our listeners, make sure you're you're tuning in and enjoying and really, really riding along with us. So let's do it. That is right. All 30 of you listeners from last week, you keep on listening. I love you all 30 of you and one or two of them might've been me, but that's okay. We won't talk about it. Uh, and of course, sitting with me as well, the Irish chooch himself, Timmy O'Reilly with a brand spanking new microphone and webcam looking fantastic. Timmy, how you doing tonight? I'm good. You can hear me and see me clearer now, sounding like a chooch, just like I usually do. Um, speaking of listeners, I just want to give a shout out to Austin Ross. Um, he is a listener, don't know him, but a uh, friend of a friend. He was um, relayed the message that we had a golf podcast going, and he is a avid listener. So shout out to him. So let's, uh, yes. let's get this thing going. Let's go, Austin Thank Ross. You, Mr. Ross. Thank you. thank you, Mr. Ross. Thank you, Mark Monroe, for down getting our downloads up. Like, thank you, everyone who is actually listening to this. We Let's very much going, appreciate man. Number it. three, number three. I know this is great. So, hey, for us, for us New Englanders, weather's getting warmer. We're uh, just feeling that golf itch a little bit more, and it's uh, things are starting to green up around these parts. So th- we're getting antsy. Oh, oh yeah, my God. I, I played the other day and. I, I'm not going to show code. I played like absolute donkey dick. It was <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> it was so bad. Oh, it was that's so fantastic. Bad. Get him out. Glad to be out there though. You know, as always. I don't, I, I don't know what you guys are talking about down here in South Carolina. This is, I've been playing every week. This is wonderful. It's great <laughs> out here. Yeah. You oh, got a tan man. somehow. I don't know how that happens. It's genetically impossible. <laughs> Neither do I. We don't even have top <laughs> golf up here. I mean, we don't have outdoor golf in the winter and you, you don't have, you don't even have the, those top golfs. The first location at Top Golf in New England will make literally millions of dollars, like millions of dollars. Maybe even built. No, not I'll billions, go, but I'll spend at least a couple grand. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, oh man, we are all as always. We are off to a rousing start here on the Duff and Up podcast. Speaking of rousing starts and finishes, we're going to go ahead. We're going to talk a little bit about this tournament. We know it ended on Sunday, but we'll still hit on it a little bit. The Honda Classic down in Jupiter, Florida, PGA National. Matt Jones, the Aussie himself, able to take away the victory. And I got to tell you, this was really interesting to watch because it was almost a start to finish win. But Matt Jones goes out on that first day. It's a nine under bogey free 61 looking beautiful next day shoots a 70, you know, even bar we're fine with it next day shoots a 69. You know, we're still fine with it. And just everyone else collapsed around him and he just was slow and steady for the rest of the way ends up winning by five strokes, just outlasted everyone. And, you know, unbelievable week for him. So let's go ahead, Tim. What'd you think about, uh, what'd you think about the event this week? Yeah. So with the, Aaron Wise, obviously, he started off strong, 264s. You know, it looked like the weekend was his, but he did not come through. Um, at, it, obviously, at the end, there was many strokes in between first and second, so it was kind of a lackluster finish. Uh, the bear trap was more like a bear fluffer. Like, it really did not <laughs> trap anyone. I was expecting to see some water balls. I was expecting to see some, you know, some, some, some drama, something. I don't know. But then I was watching, I was, you know, working around the house and, uh, you know, the, the best man won. He just, he closed it out real strong and uh, that's all there is to it. I would say the biggest issue with the bear trap was that Matt Jones was the only guy who didn't go in it. Like everyone else was hitting balls left and right into there. There was over 270 water balls this week, but he was just not, he, he was just slow and steady, man. He was just going down. He's like, I'm going to hit this ball, put it right where I want it. Like it was in Stain how well he played. No, he Ain't wasn't slow and steady. He was fast. That dude was quick. Did you he see remi- that? He reminded me of Brooks Kepka out there a little bit. Literally, just step up and go. Oh Man, my we, god, we got to take was notes cool. on that, Holy Mikey. From now on, 
I'm making you play like Matt Jones out there. You get to your ball, you take one practice swing and you hit it. Like it was 15 seconds between like the other dudes hitting shots and him hitting a shot. Like it was insane. Absolutely insane. It's good to see him get that win for sure. It's, I mean, he's got to now have an extra jump in his step and he's got to be, I mean, this early in the year, I know he's, He's not young, so he's and he hasn't won a bunch. So winning by that many strokes too, that's impressive. So um good for Matt. And hey, I don't know. I think he'll he'll hang tight, but I mean I don't I don't I want to hear that name more. You know, I want to hear that name more. I I haven't heard it enough. No, oh, here's I mean, the thing too. Yeah, go ahead, Tim. Sorry about that. Tim mean to interrupt you, bud. No, no, no. I, I mean he has a couple Australian open wins and um, it's, you know, he won in the U S of a, you know, finally, and we'll definitely see him in at Augusta. Um, one name we won't be seeing is Ricky Fowler, but that's for another time. Um, but yeah, uh, Hey, congratulations on the win. And, uh, he won the bears tournament and he conquered the bear trap. That's all it is. You know, what does he have? What does Ricky have to do to get it? He has to win the Texas open, right? Like that's what it is now. Like he has to win that event. He's got to win. Think, Cause he, he won't be able to be in the top. 10 because it's always it's not yeah um i wish i had pulled that up but um yeah i, I think don't know. he legitimately has to win me too oh, oh my god, god. Crazy. let me look up let me look up his field but yeah uh hopefully ricky can get in there did you hear did you see nick faldo yeah nick, nick faldo <laughs> roasted him oh <laughs> i want i want oh, i want to see ricky i want to see ricky have a little bit of you know a little bit of that mm, like come back, like I don't know, just come back at Nick Faldo a little harder. He, I don't know, he he takes it, which is respectable, respectable there, respectable. Um, but he takes it, and he's not he's not a, a character really in the media. He's more just pretty monotone, mellow, low key. But I'm got to got to root for him to 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 win, to win the Texas Open. I mean. You you root for a guy like that. Ricky's a likable guy, and and you want to see him in the Masters. Yeah. For those absolutely. for those of you who don't know, for those of you who don't know what happened and what we're talking about, Nick Faldo tweeted um, once Ricky Fowler did not qualify. Once he was cut, um, Nick Faldo tweeted that while Ricky won't be at the Masters, he'll have plenty of time to make more commercials for Puma. So that's what we're talking about. Is he wrong though? I mean, literally every time I turn on the golf tournament, it's either a Grant Thornton commercial or one of the new Puma commercials with him in it. Like he is crushing the golf ads. Good like, for him. Good for it's him. A lot. He, he makes a lot, a lot of money. Ad. Yeah. He's a likable guy. The kids love he him. Is. Do, Nick Faldo doesn't need to come. Nick Faldo doesn't need to come at him like that. I mean, yeah, Nick has the right. He's, he's more established, well more established than Ricky. I mean, get out of here, but what are you trying to do? with that comment stir the pot like what are you trying to get out of that comment i mean he's exactly guy, wants to stir the pot <laughs> let the guy live his life let the guy live his life and uh it's too bad but i'm sticking to my usa guy ricky there nick nick faldo across the pond see you later <laughs> yeah, what did he, he had nothing to gain from it unless they have some secret relationship and they're really yeah outside, you know then they're just busting each other's balls but you know uh whatever moving on i mean geez. it didn't seem like that in ricky's in ricky's uh when ricky was asked about it in the media no ricky and seemed heated like he kind of like just dismissed he did. it like yeah. yeah he took the high road yeah for sure definitely took the high road and he's taken the high road enough i mean i know he hasn't won but he's a class act that's for sure yeah he's a good guy i mean it, it's uh hey it was great for him to make the cut this week so it was great that he got to play on saturday and sunday for this week but uh but yeah that was definitely a little rough uh, for our boy Rick, or as I like to call him, BDR. You know, this is this is a family show, so if you know what BDR stands for, you, you're you're a good man. But I'm not going to repeat it right now. Timmy, conversation Rick. for another um, <laughs> conversation for another day. Timmy, how about that? We had that conversation right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. No, I love Wait, it. Where, wherever the show takes us, right? I love it. Oh, I don't <laughs> care at all. But it was, oh, it was a great weekend. It was, it was kind of nice to see on Sunday that like everyone is struggling. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I like it when the golf course is actually kind of hard. And like when guys are struggling, especially on a Sunday, like Aaron wise, 
had that awful four putt for triple bogey. Like I saw that and I was like, it's so cringy, but at the same time you have to watch it because you're just like, how can you miss that bad that many times? I did um, a I've said, I've never done that before. Boy, have I. Oh, <laughs> the amount of four putts I've had is brutal, 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 brutal. Um, he, he went in, he had a say, he had a three over 73 on the last day. That was kind of rough for him. JB Holmes, last group, JB Holmes, again, shit in the bed, the last group. Uh, he shot a nine over 79 for the day. And that wasn't even the worst part. The worst part about watching JB Holmes right now is he is so slow on the course. Like he makes Bryson look like a hair. And JB Holmes is the tortoise just kind of chilling in the back. Like he was, and you saw Matt Jones, who he was playing with, was fast, was a very fast. Like I am shocked that Matt Jones got into that good of a groove because JB Holmes was playing so slow that I could not do that. It was absolutely insane how slow he was playing. And the fact that Matt Jones was able to keep it in, keep it in play and keep it, keep it in gear. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, was he trying to ice him like the fourth quarter or the NFL coach, you know, trying to call timeout right before the kickoff? You know, I don't know. It was someone was, paying him to ice him. I don't know. I was thinking like, again, a 79 to JB is, is what? Like, like a, a, a 93 for, for us on a difficult course. It's 90. like a 107 for us. So like it so, is. So like, if you add, I mean, if, if you go from like a, a 90 to a hundred, like it's hard to play fast when you suck, you know, like that, he's like extra sucking. And he's trying, <laughs> trying, trying to keep up. It's hard, I'm sure. Yeah, I just think, I mean, you saw him too. Like, he'd be over there. He'd be taking, like, four or five practice swings, bouncing off, like, looking again, taking another practice swing. There was one time when it was not on the four putt, but it was on one of the holes where Aaron Rewise just, like, was not putting well. CT Pan, like, I think had a bogey on that hole. Um, and so they were on the green for like 10 or 15 minutes and Matt Jones and JB Holmes are just in the fairway. They're just chilling, having a good time. Uh, well, JB Holmes not having a good time cause he was like six or seven over at that. Um, but literally the call, I think it was Ian Baker Finch, like made a comment being like, I cannot believe this, but JB Holmes still has not selected a club, even though they've been standing in the fairway for 15 minutes and everyone was just like, this is why no one wants to play with JB Holmes because he is so slow and I get that he's calculated and I get he likes to do that. We see it with Bryson all the time, but sooner or later, if you're having that bad of a round, I would expect you to want to get off the course as quick as possible. And he just did not. He wanted to stay on there forever. I know I do. <laughs> I know I would. I want to get to the nearest bar possible when I play that bad. If I was a pro player and I shot 79, I'd be like, yes, all the beers, every beer that you have in this, in this establishment, I want now immediately. Oh yeah. So besides that, we had a couple other good rounds. Uh, Brandon Hagee is a nice little 30th birthday present, shot a four under 66, finished in second place. Pretty good day for him. I know he was kind of close to the top. For most of the for most of the week anyway so it's great for him to take home 763k and be able to kind of move into that uh for this week i think he's playing at corrales because he's not at the dell match play maybe he's taking the week off um but you know great for him to be able to have that second place under him and get get some of those fedex cup points too uh just round out the top five real quick we had four people tied at three at uh we had four people tied at third place with Russell Henley, Brendan Steele, Chase Cipher, and CT Pan, all kind of names that were a little bit like CT Pan was around for most of it, but Brendan Steele, Russell Henley, Chase Cipher, they were all mid mid morning guys. So they just had really good rounds and, and were able to get in the top five while everyone else was just falling back like crazy. So great for them. And unfortunately now we must discuss the saddest part of the weekend which was the finest stage whiskey in all of golf, Lee Westwood, not just missing the cut, missing the cut by about a billion. So he started off, uh, I believe the cut ended up being one over par. So he was right at like one over par going into Friday morning. And boy, oh boy, did he just have a bad day. Seven over par. Uh, there was one point where he just putted it up the uh, putted it up a hill three times, just kept 
you know, one time down, put it again, second time coming back down, third time, hit the shit out of it. Just when, you know, 20 feet be- behind the hole. So unfortunate weekend for him. But I got a little conspiracy theory on why he didn't play that well this week. Ooh, we oh. got a conspiracy theory. Come on. Come we do on. have a conspiracy theory. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but the two events prior where he finished second place and second place, who was his caddy? That would be his fiance. His fee. Yep. His girlfriend slash fiance slash partner slash whatever it is. I don't, I don't totally know um, what it was. Uh, so I don't know what to call her, um, but Helen was on the bag for him. Who was on the bag for him this week? Uh, that would be his spawn. That would be correct. His son was on the bag for him this week. So you know what? He said that his son was not only going to be on the bag for him this week, but I believe he's also going to be, he's also been on the bag for him during the Dell match play that's been going on. And I think he's going to, I think he confirmed that he's going to be on his bag for the masters. Lee, you better call up Helen right now. And be really? like, get your butt back to the U S of a get ready because you're going to be lifting this bag all throughout Augusta. So I can actually win a major. Because that will happen if Helen comes back. And I need Helen on Lee Westwood's bag for the Masters. Not dealing with his son anymore. It's not working out. Lee, get your your wonderful girlfriend slash fiance slash whatever, Helen, back on that bag. I mean, it just just proves what we were saying earlier, though, that he doesn't care who's on the bag. He's just out there having fun. And it really doesn't matter he uh, he whether it's his wife whether it's his son whether it's his dog you know who who cares he's just out there and he is playing golf and i just love that he's still going to be at the masters let me ask you a question are you two still on the lee westicle train yes yep. oh 100 all aboard i think all he, aboard I, lee westwood the tank engine baby this is all we need we got thomas we got lee we got toby the little steam engine back there we got all the tank engines, baby. We are going all aboard. Chew, chew. Yeah, he, uh, he, he really doesn't care who's on the bag, Tim. I mean, he's, he's played enough good golf lately to really kind of use this as a throwaway. I mean, he probably had a bad day. He had his son as the, on the bag. He, he, again, like we're saying, he probably didn't really care too much if he made the cut. He's, he's played such great golf as of late. He's, he's a fine aged whiskey and he really knows how to, how to put some good holes together. Now, can he make those crunch putts in major events? No, he can't. Cause he hasn't shown it and uh, we're room for him to get there, but I'm, I'm still on the, let's throw some money down on, on Lee for the masters. Cause I'm sure the payout would be nice. Actually, yeah, the payout would probably be glorious. Although, I don't know, the last, because he finished in second place two times in a row, maybe it wouldn't be as bad. But, you know, it was it was a great week um, at the Honda Classic. Unfortunately, not for Lee Westwood, but everyone else seemed to have a pretty good week. Brandon, um, the What was that? You go Mr. Hagee there, Brandon Hagee? I know. Oh. Birthday, birthday present, I mean... That's not bad. Four under on Sunday to finish second. Second place, walk away with seven hundred sixty-three thousand dollars. I'll t- I'll take that for a birthday present. I right. would absolutely take seven hundred sixty-three thousand dollars for a birthday present. Even if, if anyone second. wants to, yeah. Even October if October eleventh, it's the second. Oh yeah, just a little walking around money. Did you just guys know? Walk- did you guys know that the Honda Classic is the longest, um, the longest standing tournament sponsor in the PGA Tour? When you think about it. I was looking that really? up like, yes, like obviously there was like, you know, the it used to be, um, it was like, it's the Dell Technologies Championship this week, but it was also at TPC Boston back then. What it used to be the Deutsche Bank, obviously yep. they, they moved on to that. Um, but I guess, I guess the Honda Classics, the longest one, longest one running. Just an interesting fact. I just thought it was cool. Wouldn't have guessed. That's crazy. Like, I don't even think, I mean, because we were talking about it even like off air, like me and me and Tim just being like how, you know, it's at PGA national it's in Jupiter and the fact that like not a lot of the big guys, especially the big guys who live in Jupiter, like didn't play that week. So it's just a little weird, just kind of seeing it like how I don't think the tournament's fallen off, but I do think that 
unfortunately it's just with everything going on right now like it being played right before the Dell match play and right after the players championship like most of the guys are going to take that week off yeah so you know we got to see some great play though I was really happy to see Matt Jones play well and also what I was really happy or not too happy but it was kind of cool to see the amount of balls that went into the water I know we talked about it earlier oh my goodness gracious the fishes were feasting on Titleist Pro V1s. 270 balls. They had the counter. 270 balls into the water. Like, for me, that's like a weekend. But, like, you know, for these pro guys, like, they don't go in the water that much. <laughs> don't sweat yourself, Brennan. Come on. It's not 270 in a weekend. <laughs> no, you can that. get around a golf course, kiddo. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, joking I'm just, about that, but I'm just picturing like like 14 guys and like those those pond waiters going in there and just scooping up all those Pro V1s, selling them the next day. I mean, hey, I'd be doing that, you know. I would be <laughs> doing the same exact thing. Just going in. This one's got a scuff on it. Who cares? <laughs> oh refurbished. man. Refurbished. Refurbished <laughs> Titleist Pro V1s. I'll take them anytime. That's what they make Kirkland's into. So just wait. <laughs> Is it really? No, no. There was a whole like story back in the day that Kirkland's were just refurbished Pro V1s, but it came out to be false. So oh, Kirkland one. also, uh, Costco like kind of let them like play along with that. So then Titleist got like mad and I think sued him. <laughs> just trying to get the name out there, I'm sure. Because exactly. any publicity is good publicity. Exactly. You know, so great week for the Honda Classic. Again, like we said, Great job for Matt Jones, and it has set up well for going into the Dell match play this week. But before we get to that, we need to talk about one of the biggest thing, one of the biggest stories in golf that has nothing to do with actual golf, but it does have to do something with video game golf, and that would be Tiger Woods returning to the video game golf world. He has signed on with the 2k side and he is coming back for all of these wonderful new golf games that are being produced by 2k Giggity. It bet, if it is not called tiger woods 2k 22 i'm gonna be a little upset i won't be too it's upset great. but i'll be a little upset but you know i'm very excited I, I don't know if you guys were able to play 2k 21 at all it was good it was fine um it's like fun to play but you can only play as like your creative golfer you can't play as like any of the pros like you used to be able to. I think with this game, what's going to happen now is that they're going to be like, okay, we need to start making the golfers actually golfers again. We need to let these guys be able to play with professionals, everything like that. Cause that used to be you? one of the, yes. Now I'm not a gamer. Timmy, uh, Timmy and I used to play PGA back in 2k seven day, like 2007 days, like <laughs> way back. Mm -hmm. But you're telling me you can't golf with an actual golfer in, in PGA nowadays on, on PlayStation? That's correct, sir. What? Mm hmm So, I know. So, I think that they are going to go ahead and make that change. Um, I will be very happy when they make the change. But one of the things they do need to do is they better get those swings down right, too. So that's all I care about. Well, I, I the the video game as it stands now is which it's kind of right up my alley because I'm golf course oriented. Um, mm -hmm. most, a lot of my golf pro on golf courses, golf courses. So this is more golf course oriented. I can play some course in Rhode Island that I have never and never will be able to play. I can go play. Obviously, you can play Augusta National in the in the big games, but I can go play. Um, Wanna Moisa Country Club. I've never played it. I would like to play Wanna Moisa. Um, I know you've played there, Mike, but. Um, it's just one of those things where, and, and I can go and I can play courses that I have played like Lincoln country club. I can go play Kirkbride country club and like, just play it on a video game and have it. And I can play it over and over. And then even a course that I'm going to play next weekend, I can play it on the video game first, just to preview the course and then go to the course and see how either, whether it's accurate or not, or, you know, know where the holes are going. So I, I mm -hmm. think that that is like the cool part about it now, but now they're just going to integrate real players into it. And now it's going to be even better. So it's making a great thing even better, which is awesome. Yeah. And I don't think they're going to get away with the course designer. Cause I think that's like a big part of 
the game right now itself is also being be able to design those courses. Um, and that's what people do. They take hours to like literally build those courses out. So absolutely insane. Um, but I am very excited. If Matthew Wolf swing is not Matthew Wolf swing, he better be in that video game studio for hours on end so they can get every little thing that he does right in there. So when I play with him, he just goes up and he just goes, Ooh, whoop, and he just does his nice little, little thingy. And we do that. And for those of you who are watching on the YouTube channel, you just got a treat. For those of you who are listening, you did not get the treat. Head on over to the YouTube channel to see that because <laughs> I just did a little dance and then did a nice little like imitation of the Matthew Wolf swing. And it's, 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 it's embarrassing, but you, know, you, know, you guys can have a good laugh. <laughs> you got to think that if they put Matt Wolf in the game, it's his swing is going to be like it is in real life. I mean, don't disrespect video game like intelligence i mean come jim furyk swing was like jim furyk swing and that was back in what tiger woods right. 2004 right so what is I it i mean matthew what, what... wolf swing is the same thing except instead of inside out it's outside in. they have and... people that who are paid in electrical computer engineers whoever does this graphic designers who are paid to do this they are going to make a map <laughs> matt wolf swing absolutely hands down it must have been some some what copyright or some some using of image issue. I mean, why did they go away from being able to use a, an Ian Poulter in his freaking plaid cross cricket <laughs> pants? Like that's that's foreign to me. Yeah. So the biggest thing is that it changed hands. So this used to be owned by EA Sports. So it used to be owned by Electronic Arts. Um, then it, when they got rid of Rory McIlroy, there wasn't really like a golf game. 2K ended up buying like this startup company that made one called the golf club, which is why like, there's all these different area and like how you can build your own golf course, everything like that. Like that game was very focused on like that end of it. There was no pros. There was nothing involved with the PGA side. 2K buys this game, this gaming company, uh, which is like hub studios. I think I don't, I don't know the entire specifics of it but 2k buys that 2k then license gets the licensing agreement with pga justin thomas gets right on the cover and yeah i think they just tried to like rush the game out a little bit and so it wasn't as good as i was hoping but at the same time it was still really fun to play i will be very excited when i can play with justin thomas play with jordan spieth play with tiger woods Let's get Brian oh, yeah. Harmon in there too. Let's get Phil ah. Nicholson in there. Let's get some lefties in there. Yes, sir. Do it. Hey, Brent, Brennan and Tim. Um, no, just the the game. What was I gonna say? Shoot, you were about to say Taylor Gooch better be in there that game. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Oh. What were you gonna say, Mike? No. Gooch and Gooch, man. Was, Brennan, you, pre you prefaced Gooch. you prefaced this segment on this has nothing to do with with golf, but I think you're right, obviously, but you're wrong too, in the sense that I think this is great for the game of golf. And if Tiger Woods is on the cover and if Tiger Woods is in the game and if like guys are in the game and swings are swings and you can design all these courses. And like Timmy, you said, you can, you can preview a course you're going to play and it could be in your backyard and uh, you could have made it, or you could have had a friend who had made it or, or some guru tech guy who made it, but regardless, I feel like it's just going to because video games are so big right now. It's going to it's going to bring more more awareness. Oh, now, you could play, now you could play with Tiger Woods in your backyard, yeah. in your home course. I mean, how cool is that? It just makes it better. What were you going to say, Brent? Sorry. Oh, no, no. I was just saying that's 100. I mean, Tiger Woods was. The way I think of it is, you know how like FIFA now is like a FIFA has always been like a big game, but like how FIFA got really big in America like, you know, around 2009, 2010, 2011. Tiger Woods used to be the game where people would like right. sit. Like I used to sit in Mike's basement and I know you did too, Tim. You did as well, Tim, sit in people's basements and play Tiger Woods and like fight over who got to be Tiger Woods, except I never wanted to be Tiger Woods because I would always be John Daly because it was fun to see him grip it and rip it the entire time. But, you know, it was always fun to be able to be like, okay, who are we playing with? Who's going to be this guy? Who's going to be this guy? Like that used to be the best part about the game, like trying to, you know, 
say St. Andrews with Rory McIlroy versus Tiger Woods when you put up gale force winds and it's 50 miles an hour and you have no idea where the ball's going, even though you you aim like so hard, but you still have no idea where it's going to go. Um, that part was so much fun. And I did, I do think like it brought like video games do bring eyes to the tell, like they'll bring eyes to the television. They'll bring eyes to the sport. So, you know, if you have a fun game, like the amount of people that I know who got into soccer just because of FIFA, like Tiger Woods, this new game could do that for golf as well. And I think it can, and, and it very well might too. So, yeah, so I shouldn't have preferenced it that way, but I meant it has nothing to do with golf on the course right now and the PGA tour itself right now, but it absolutely can has something to do with golf in the future, building a brand, really trying to make itself a, a very uh, intriguing sport to a lot of different people. Well said brother. Absolutely. And who better to put on, who better to put on the, like, obviously you get, you have to put someone else on the cover besides tiger with him, but who, who better to be on the cover of the first one than tiger, like brings everyone together. Tiger and Taylor Gooch. That's all we need. On the That's cover. right. <laughs> <laughs> no, a hundred percent. Tiger Woods. I mean, you think golf, you think Tiger Woods, you know, unless you are above the age of 70, you're thinking Tiger Woods bottom line. Mm. Or below we, the age. We can of get Jack. We can 10. get Jack in there too, Tim. We can get Jack in there, Arnie and Hogan, and oh, we can, we oh, can yeah. spend a whole episode on that. That's for sure. Yeah, I don't know if you guys remember. It was like one where it was like going throughout like the ages of golf, and you had to play like old Tom Morris to start, and it was just like the most ridiculous. Like the the games that they used to design were the most ridiculous things in the world. Did they really? Like the, oh yeah, there was one where you had to like go through like ages of golf so you played like yeah like you played arnie then you played jack then you played i think it was like nick Faldo. like you know what i mean like they went yeah. through like decades basically it was just like oh okay or sevi ballesteros was a big one that was always in the games Sevy. i used to love playing with sevi ballesteros he like died you know really young which was super sad and he was an unbelievable golfer but like you know just being able to like, I probably wouldn't have rem- I, you know, as an eight year old, I didn't know who Seve Ballesteros was, but then I played Tiger Woods and then I realized who he was. And then I asked my dad who he was and he told me. <laughs> so, you know, you get to learn a little bit from that too, especially when you're a youngster. Yeah. Seve's a great guy to, to read up about and, and learn about it. I mean, he's got a movie seven or it's yeah. He, he's interviewed in the movie and he's kind of, it kind of goes back and forth between, not animation, but a young boy. It's obviously not Seve, but it just kind of in Spain, I believe his upbringing. Um, and Seve also talks about it a lot. It's, it's, it's interesting. And he's, he's, he was a character and he was a hell of a golfer. I mean, you don't hear about him a lot too. Cause he, he, he passed away at 54 from like battles with, I think it was a brain or can- cancerous, some operation or something, but Sevy, Sevy's cool. I've, I've looked up and read about him a little bit as of the past year or two, but he's a, he's a name that sometimes escapes like our, our millennial generation. Still holds the record for European tour victories at 50. Like he he's win? yeah. 50 wins on the European tour. How crazy wow. is that? Five time major champ won the masters twice when the, U, when the open three times, never won the PGA and never won the U S but Jesus, like skip school every day to go to the, yeah. PGA. <laughs> like skip to- every day. <laughs> what an absolute monster. Sevy Ballesteros was too. Oh my goodness gracious. Only grew up with a, a three iron. I think too, like one club for, for the longest time. You must've been hitting stingers, yeah. absolute stingers. Imagine that thing, like three feet off the air, just. And uh, that, of course, was uh, talking to Sevi Ballesteros and also the point where both or all three of us decided to all do a little whoosh with our hands and with our mouths at the same time to, <laughs> to make the stinger noise. So, again, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, you got a treat. If you're not, it's OK. Finish the podcast, then go watch it on YouTube and you'll see it. It's very funny. <laughs> um. But yeah, so that is, I mean, again, just having that in golf again is going to be really nice and being able to play with some different players, being able to play with the best in the world. 
speaking of the best in the world, right now, the best in the world are down in Austin Country Club. What a segue. Austin, Texas. What a segue. What a segue. And again, that that course better be on there too because Austin Country Club is, is a beautiful, beautiful course. But Dell Match Play Championship going on right now. Little different than in the past. I mean, they, they started this new format about two or three years ago, I think. Um, so it's no longer just the one and done, which I used to think was amazing. So, you know, I, I, I guess I don't know. <laughs> um, with this new bracket, it is basically you have a group of four and there's, let me count real quick. One, two, three. There's 16 groups of four. And then out of that group of four, one person makes it out. So it's just like, okay. Um, interesting. I, I kind of like it. I kind of don't like it, but I kind of like it. So it's kind of weird like that. Um, but going into it, you know, today was the first day of the event. We're recording Wednesday night. And there were surprisingly decent amount of upsets today. Not too bad. Probably the biggest one that I look at is Bryson losing. Um, we've talked about Bryson so much on this podcast just because he is the most divisive person in golf right now, but also probably its biggest draw. Um, you know, if you don't count Tiger, which he's not even playing right now, hopefully he's back at home. That's all that matters. He's back at home. He's recovering. Be ready for the 2022 Masters. That's all we need. That's all we need. Um, but Bryson losing to Antoine Rosner, who, if you are a listener of the Duffing Up podcast, which there are 30 of you, so if you are a listener, you will know that we talked about Antoine Rosner last week when he hit a 60-foot putt to win a European Tour event, uh, the Qatar Masters. Yes, that's what it was, the Qatar Masters. So that leapfrogged him into the top 64 in order to get him into this tournament. So big play for Antoine Rosner coming out here, beating Bryson DeChambeau. Huge. Very yeah. impressive. Question, Brendan. Yes. Now they play a round robin. So there's Wednesday, mm-hmm. Thursday, Friday, round robin. Everybody yep. plays everybody. When you advance, is it then single elimination from there? Yes. So are, are they going to play more than one round on, on a given day? Two, yeah, I think they're doing two and two, right? Two and two. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I think they're doing... 36 holes on Saturday and 36 holes on Sunday. That's and obviously sweet. it's match play. So it doesn't always go 36 or go 18. Um, exactly. But you know, so they can be real short match plays mm-hmm. the bomb, man. Match plays the bomb. They got to mix it in more. I was just going to ask that question. I was like, obviously like the, it's a WGC event. It's 550 FedEx cup points. Um, but I, I, why isn't match play more of a thing? And, and if we are going to implement it somewhere else in the season in, you know, an unsexy week, obviously somewhere in between, you know, the masters and, you know, the U S opener, the masters and PGA, you know, and vice versa, whatever. Um, where are we going to stick that, that match play open, you know, the mm-hmm. match play. This is a great format. I like this. I mean, and I wonder, I wonder if it has anything to do with March madness hoops. I, I, I don't know if they I'm sure it, it does. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of coincidental. I, I I'm sure there's something behind it. I don't know, but I mean, it brings that like some people play differently. Some people play better. Some people just th- thrive off of, off of a different style like this one. And I think it, I think it does prove the better golf. Obviously it proves who the better golfer was that given day, but it just kind of makes it different. Mono yeah. in mono. Exactly. It definitely, I mean, it definitely has more of a Ryder cup feel like obviously cause Ryder cup is all match play. Um, kind of going back to that, I do know that there's like the, the, uh, Zurich has the two people, they have that two, the teams group, they have that teams event. Yes. So I just think too, it's, it's more of, you would have to do it in like a world golf because you would have to bring together, like, this could be like something where it's like the CJ cup or the SOS or the Zozo championship, something like that could be match play because it's a limited field but you can't really do a match play when you're inviting 156 golfers to the event. Um, that will take 
much more than just seven days. <laughs> um, That's a good point, Brennan. That's a good so point. So that, that kind of stinks. Um, for the limited events, though, I think it'd be cool. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about, like, alternate events later. Like, I think an alternate event style, like, you know, you have the U.S. Open and the guys who don't qualify for the U.S. Open, they could do, like, a match play or something like that. Like, that'd be kind of cool. Ooh, like, yeah, I, why not? I'd watch that. I'll watch that in a second. I know that there's that, that like world golf WGC events always have an alternate alternate event next to it. Uh, some of the majors do. I know the open does, I think the U S open does now too, but it's mostly WGC events. And then a couple of the majors will also have an alt event during them as well. Um, so, you know, I think I do like, the style. I think it's really cool. I did like the old like elimination where they would play literally just down one to 64 rank them like NCAA tournament style. And it was single elimination, but I also get that you don't want guys going home on the first day and getting all pouty and everything like that too. So. Oh yeah. The March motif, Mike, you're right. Just March madness, the WGC, we got brackets flying out of our ears right now. And I oh, yeah. love it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me about my b-ball bracket. Holy goodness, is no, it bad? I picked Iowa. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. I had Ohio I went, State in my championship game. I went Gonzaga, but I had OK State going far. Yep, I, I had them in my final four. Yeah, Ooh. Just a brutal bracket. Yeah, it's not a great bracket this this year. Um, going back to golf brackets, though. No, I'm just <laughs> oh, is this all podcast? Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, one day we'll do a 19th hole talk when it when the golf when the golf uh golf gets a little little less less intense during like the Zozo Walter and the CJ over Cup. Rory. That Walter. was a big upset. Big one. Poulter wow. over Ian Poulter, who by the way is like the king of match play, and it pisses me off to no end because I hate Ian Poulter um but he's what the a rider he is a rider cup king he is literally the only reason why europe ever does well in the rider cup because he goes you know freaking four and oh every time he plays in it he is a just a, for some reason he's really good at match play and, and rory put up an absolute stinker did you see i think it was the third hole or the fourth hole he literally drove it into a yard and into a pool he literally drove it into the neighbor's pool. Did he take a drop in their yard? <laughs> <laughs> I think he had to. I think he had to hit a provisional. I think. Yeah. I think they were just like you. You need to go back to the tee right now, and and you need to hit another one of those. But you know, Rory kind of continuing those struggles, which sucks. I mean, I like Rory. Um, you know, I think in. Uh, He's always had that super big pressure on him. And I know we talked about it before because he was deemed the next Tiger when he was 16 years old, when he, you know, came, turned pro 17, won that, uh, I think it was the Dubai Championship, the Dubai Classic, something like that. He won that event, which back then was a huge event. Like it was one of the, one of the biggest on the European tour. I think he ended up winning like two or three million bucks just from that event, which is guys crazy. Were, guys were 17. Paid. Guys were paid millions of dollars to go. I remember just to yes. make an appearance. That's right. Yep. Because Tiger Woods, I think, got paid five million bucks just to go to the event. And he was like, I'm never going again. <laughs> I don't yeah, think he ever went of, back uh, after. Yeah, some guys were very turned off because Saudi Arabia just not a great place. And Dubai. United Arab Emirates, not Saudi Arabia. Close. Sorry. Very sorry. close. Sorry, but- yeah. We're sorry to all our Dubai listeners out there. You are not the United, (laughs) you are not Saudi Arabia. Um, No, but like the people people who are funding those tournaments are like, are are, multi-billionaires. Yeah, but they're they're, almost trillionaires. There's also a lot of stuff in the news where they, yeah, it's dirty. Yeah. We don't have to get into that on on a golf podcast, but I do remember that like a bunch of guys got into, like we're getting paid like millions just to show up when they first started playing over there in Dubai and Abu Dhabi and places like that. Just, just, just to show up, show face, miss the cut and head on home. <laughs> um, but you know, I, uh, Rory has always had that pressure on him, unfortunately. And I do think that, you know, he's never lived up to the expectations. You can't live up to those expectations. 
Um, but at the same time, I, I do always pull for him and I do want to make sure that, um, you know, we're very fair on this podcast and we do love ourselves some Rory, but you know, the struggles unfortunately look like they're back for Rory. It kind of sucks. Yeah. Another big upset here. Matt Kuchar. Coochie Coochie comes out. <laughs> Cooch. I, I, I don't like Matt Kuchar at all. Uh, but comes out, defeats Justin Thomas. Um, three and two. Rough day for JT, unfortunately. And this was probably, you know, if Bryson had lots to Antoine Rosner, I think this would have been probably the biggest upset because even though Rory, like, put up a stinker, Rory wasn't ranked third. And Justin Thomas is like, I think the third or the second ranked dude in this tournament. So coming out and getting put against Matt Kuchar, who is just like, mm, it's a big old, big old vanilla ice cream cone, just the most bland human being you could ever meet, um, goes out there and 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 loses to Hoochie Coochie, and so you know, a little rough day for JT as well. Mm, yep. And then uh, I don't know if that's an experience thing. That's why a lot of my picks coming up are going to be experienced guys, because when you're playing against someone who's experienced match plays a whole different ball game, there's mind games being played. There is, you know, and Matt Kuchar, I mean, he, he can play those mind games if he wants to. I mean, he's got a big goofy smile and, but under that noggin and under that bald head, he's got, I'm sure there's some, some strategy that's going on and, he uh he made the his opponent pay, that's for sure. You know that dude has never said a swear in his life when you just look at him. Like Got whenever it. he hits whenever he hits a he hits a bad shot, he's just like, oh fiddlesticks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I, I don't know why I hate Matt Coocher so much, but I do. It's Does just it like one it's just thing? Does it have to do with that caddy thing? It definitely so I didn't like him before, but the caddy that's thing is like, bro, you won $1.3 million and you paid your caddy five grand and you had to get bullied on the internet into paying him the 10%. Like, come on, dude. That's shallow. Yeah. 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 They did the percentages out and it was like 0.0025% of the winnings. Like his original, you know, hey, I'm, in. I'm just like, what? Was, well, tell the, for all those listeners, tell, uh, tell them the backstory. I mean, it wasn't his real caddy, right? It was, a no. So it was a fill in. Um, the guy works at like my down in, down in Mexico. Um, I don't know what happened with Hoochie's cat. I don't know what happened with Hoochie Gucci's caddy. Um, but just couldn't make the trip. So basically my was like, we have like our premier caddy. They gave them to him for the weekend. Apparently they agreed beforehand that no matter what the guy would get paid five grand. But then it's just like you won the tournament, like pack on an extra 95 grand for what he deserves to win. So it's just brutal. Um, and that made me, that like really soured least, me towards Kucher. At least seven grand. I mean, two more grand, like something above five, which you guaranteed. And then you go and win and you give them yeah. the minimum. Come on. Nah, dude. Like you don't just give them the minimum. You won the tournament. You won the tournament. You give him his fair share, which was that. Like that's life changing money for some. It's not people like too. it's not like it was one of us winning that tourney. Like, oh yeah, no. five grand. Here you go. I'm gonna keep the rest. No, it's Matt Kuchar. You've made millions of dollars. And nope. not just that. You're in Mexico. The dollar goes so much farther, so much farther. Like, pay the dude what he's worth in that one. You won the tournament. He was on your bag. Like that dude deserves his ten percent. You give him the ten percent. Oh man. God, sometimes the show goes this is on. so weird. Matt Kuchar just gets me angry, and I don't get it. <laughs> like, who would have thought Matt Kuchar would get someone angry? Like, Him and his sketchers. Out- it must be the sketchers that he wears. You and know? the Bridgestone. He was the first one that started playing the Bridgies before the Bridgies became the Bridgies. Like, he, oh, sponsored by Bridgestone, sponsored by RBC, even though I love RBC being in South Carolina and they host the Heritage. But it's just like all of his sponsors are just like the second – and third rate sponsors. And I'm just like, of course, like, of course it is. Like, you're not even from Canada and you're the RBC guy. Like, ugh, gross. Uh, our, our next bullet scares me a little bit. It kind of like, if you're, if you're a fan of, of the guy that loses in our next, oh yeah, Finau. Demolished. Kind of got crushed. crushed. Not, that's not good news for Finau. I mean, I know it's, it's, 
he if he can't win in these little things like this, it just kind of goes to show you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's going on with Tony. I love Tony Finau. Um, I'm also going to give a huge shout out to Dylan Fratelli. You want to talk about a kid that is very much on the rise, like played at UT, has had a couple good years now on the PGA Tour. He, him and Scotty Scheffler are very good friends. Like, he's good. He is re- like, I don't know what else to say besides he's really good, but like, he always seems to be in the mix at some of these big tournaments. Like, Players' Championship, I know he was in the mix for a little bit. I think he dropped off on the last day or the third day. He just always seems to be like kind of close. Like, I, and I've, I mean, I'm kind of saying now he's like turning into Tony Fee now because he's always close, but he never makes it. But, you know, him going out and doing the dirty to Tony Fee now this today was impressive. Like, very impressive. Yeah, I don't know what's up with Tony. I mean, he, he looks like an intimidating guy. He's tall, lanky, six foot, a million. and uh, But he's a big teddy bear. Everyone knows he's a nice guy. And, you know, so I if he can't win here, I mean, on to the next week. But don't count him out. It's round robin. There is still a chance. Don't count Not him out. Not counting him out yet. I learned. I learned very much. I almost counted out Lee Westwood during the players, and then he went off. <laughs> and I counted out Justin Thomas and the players, and then he won the players. So, nice. yeah, never count them out. Finally, on the Dell match play for today, we have a new Duff Daddy from the PGA Tour, and his name is my favorite, Lonzo Griffin. Oh, man. He was up. He was two up through 15 holes. Loses 16, loses 17, gets to 18, has a chip right off the green. It's in the rough, so it's still, rough. you know, it's a tough chip. It's a rough chip. You could say it's a rough chip. <laughs> uh, I see, I see, I see. I know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Brennan trying to make some jokes right now, and it's not going well, but that's what was okay. He, what was he chipping for? I think it was just, a, I think it was a third shot. So um, I don't totally remember, but chipped it. And it was just an absolute duff, like literally barely got out of the rough right behind. Then it was right behind sprinkler head. So we got the sprinkler head rule, which pissed me off. We don't talk about the sprinkler head rule. Bryson. Uh, um, but yeah, Cam Smith was just on there. You know, he, he was on in two. He missed his birdie pup, but tapped in for par and Lonto Griffin just kind of foolishly given away that but you know we're very happy to officially welcome you as a duff daddy welcome to the club my man i've been waiting for this moment for a while lonzo griffin <laughs> welcome home bud you're, you're officially I, one of us and i'm so happy i hope i hope that you do a double take the next time you you hit that check mark and add lanto griffin to your your dk roster i hope i will never not add lanto griffin to my i DK hope roster. you do a little wait he he's not gonna really get me in the big time money he he's he's a choke artist come on what is that up up two through 15 and then you lose on a duff chip on 18 come on i agree yeah yeah, I mean, he's very much like a Zach Johnson type. Like, he makes the cut pretty much week in, week out, but he's never going to be like a... The ZJ at the British, I mean, he, he won a major. He's a... Is he won he two a, majors. Is he a hall? Is he, yeah. He, well, he's got a green jacket, absolutely. He does don't, have a green jacket. Too. Don't compare the two. Don't. Not yet, at least. There's still time. He's a youngie. There's still time. Lonto Griffin won the Houston Open, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he may win this week. He may love Texas. Who knows? Oh no, he might win the Valero next week. That would be great. Um get into our final Valero four. Texas Open. Although then Ricky can't make the Masters, so we need Ricky to win next week. Um, but yeah, unfortunately for Lonto, not not his best day, but you know, we move on. A lot of other action happening today on the on the Dell match play, which is great. And tomorrow we have not only the Dell match play, not only the European source having its third event having its having the third day of its event in Kenya, uh, the Savannah Open, which is hilarious. Um, unbelievable event. Been watching a little bit of it. But we also have the alternate PGA Tour event coming up tomorrow, the Corrales Punta Cana Championship, right in Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. What an event. If you have ever seen the pictures of the golf course, it is unbelievable. 
is one of the most beautiful golf courses I've ever seen. It's in a picturesque area. Uh, it is an alternate event. It's always been an alternate event. I think it's always going to be an alternate event, but really great that there's going to be some guys in there who, you know, are not the biggest uh, names. So, you know, pretty good event there. Um, and now I have a question before we get to our golfer poll and before we get to our bracket and before we get to our final four bracket for the uh, Dell match play championship, I have a question for you guys. I have a little mini golfer poll. So <laughs> never seen Timbo so happy. So you are the 65th or the 64th world ranked player, right? So you are right on that line between match play, going to the WGC event, match play, going to the alternate event. Now, if you know that you have like a very, very good chance, like you have an odds on chance of winning the alternate event chat, you probably don't have a big chance of winning the WGC event, right? Do you choose to go to the match play or do you choose to go to the alternate event? I am oh. playing match play. <laughs> Why the hell not? It's the premier event. If I'm 64th in the world, I mean, hey, <laughs> I'm happy just staying there, but I don't know. Why not? You know, you get to play one-on-one -on -one with, say, the number one ranked player in the world, say it's Bryson DeChambeau. What's the worst you can do? You can lose to the number one ranked player in the world. Okay. You can lose six and five. <laughs> yeah. But if you win, I mean, people are talking about you. You get a nice paycheck, you know, who knows? Even if you just win the first round, I mean, it's mm -hmm. you're pulling off an upset. You get some sort of equivalent to March Madness, you know? And uh, so count me in for 64th at the match play. Good question. I like that one. Brendan, how's the, the it's the Punta Cana, right? Mm-hmm. How is that structured exactly? It's just a stroke play tournament. Alternate shot? No, it's an alternate event. So, no, it's, yeah. So it's one of the alternate events during the year. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm on board with Timmy. I mean, you go and play against the best. You get better when you play against the best. You, you, yeah, yeah. Match play too, I mean. It's an exciting event and, and a little round robin. There's potential for more golf. I'm all in for more golf. So if you can put me on a, a course for 36 holes in a day, that's if that's a potential possibility on, on any tournament schedule, I'm, I'm signing up for that one. I, uh, Timmy, good response. I like that we're on the same page. I like that more golf. If it's more golf, it's for you. And more I, golf. More golf. Brendan, so what? Well, well I agree with you. What's the money well, breakdown? Well, I agree. Oh, my God. The money's – it's a World Golf Championship event. The money's right. insane. So you, yeah, so you're probably like – if you come in last in this event, you're probably going to make more than you come in first than the other one. No, no, that's that's <laughs> patently false. But <laughs> – um, so I'm just playing a little because I both I agree with both of you. I 100% agree with both of you. Like I'm I'm doing the match play. However, if I am almost guaranteed, if I'm like almost guaranteed like a top five spot at the corral, you know, at the alternate event. Like if you look at it that way, whereas like I'm gonna finish last at the WGC event, I'm gonna take home 50k, or you know I could win at Corrales Punta Cana. It is a PGA Tour event, so if you win that event, you get the two-year sponsorship. You get the two-year exemption to play every PGA Tour event. You get into the major championships. Like there is a bunch of perks that go with winning that alternate event that you don't get by finishing last in the WGC event. But I'm still probably still with the WGC. Hey. I mean, like, if you end up winning the WGC event, you get, like, two million bucks. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's crazy. And it's not just about that. It's about the FedEx Cup points. Like, there's severe restriction of FedEx Cup points on the w on the alternate events, obviously, because, to be honest with you, it's – we love the Corn Ferry Tour here. We are huge proponents of the Corn Ferry Tour, the next PGA Tour, the next 
members of the PGA Tour all come from the Corn Ferry Tour. However, the Corrales Punta Cana is basically a glorified Corn Ferry Tour event where it's a lot of Corn Ferry guys, and then it's also some of the guys that did not make the uh, WGC event. So, you know, you got a little bit of a mix with that. But while I'm still going to the Dell match play, I can see why people would do a double take and be like, wait a second. Are we sure that I should just, that I should go to the Dell match play and finish in dead last when I can maybe get all these perks by going here, you know? So just something to think about. All right. All right. I I'll, I'll play your game. I like that because what about Ricky Fowler? Ricky Fowler needs a W on the PGA tour to go to the masters. Does this count? If he wins, he's not the, there. I know, but, but, <laughs> But if if he played in that in the Punta Cana and he wins, does he get into the Masters? I think so because Hudson Swafford won it last year, won the twenty twenty one, and I think he got in. I think he's in the Masters. So if you're in a pinch, then I I, I can see where you're coming from. The other way, I do. Yeah, that's that's a great point, Timmy. If Ricky's if Ricky could win the Punta Cana, and he's not there he's doing something wrong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, you know, who knows? He's probably, he's probably shooting another commercial. For commercial. Yeah, I knew he was going <laughs> to say it. I knew it. <laughs> you thought about it too. You paused. <laughs> I know. I don't want to go there. Uh, oh, he did it. Yeah. I'd uh, like the, to know. Uh, uh, the BDR mob is going to kill me. <laughs> I'm one of you. Don't worry. I am one of you. Oh my God. When I made that TikTok about Ricky Fowler, I got so much hate. Got so <laughs> much hate. Um, speaking of speaking of that, speaking of hate, I know that there is a lot of hate going around in the world today, which is really unfortunate. I mean, you look at some of these crazy acts, and the the world's just in a tough place right now. So there's there's always time to to be uplifting and and positive, and hopefully you get some enjoyment from our podcast. We we enjoy it. That's I think first and foremost, why we do it, but just kind of heard that word hate and, and um, like, I'm a big basketball guy and you see the NCA women's and, and men's comparing the, the locker rooms and the, the um, amenities, all that good stuff. But I don't want to, I don't want to skip over what some big news in the LP, LPGA. Talk to me. Michelle Wee West. She's back. She's back. She's back. She's back. She's My. back. That's exciting. I mean, especially I'm sure a lot of young women golfers and, and probably not too young because she's, I mean, I, I bet if you're between like 12 and 20, 12 and 22, you probably idolize her if you're a big woman golfer. So it's kind of kind of like Tiger Stanford. I mean, she, she wears a lot of red. I feel I feel like she's kind of got, I mean, yeah, just uh, good to see. I idolize her and I'm a male golfer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, growing up when she was playing in a PGA tour event at what age 17, like that, she got that sponsor exemption. I was just like, wow, this is kind of crazy right now. That was really cool. Um, yeah. There's I no think... one, there's, there's no one better who there's no one who wears the Nike swoosh better than Tiger Woods. We can all agree upon that. That's for damn sure. Close second, Michelle Wee West. Michelle Wee West. Right? She's up there. She's she made it her, her brand on the LPGA tour. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot like, you know, I'm team Adidas all the way, but you know, I can respect someone who makes, who is able to kind of envision that and, and put that brand and make it their own. And Michelle, we West 100% did that on the women's tour and 100% did that for the LPGA. And she brought people to the stands and she's going to continue to bring people to the stands. So very happy to see her back. Very happy to see the tabletop putting stance again because that thing is outrageous. The way how flat she gets is insane. And it works perfectly. She hits like every freaking putt. It's it's like se- that's like Sevy. If you watch Sevy putt, he gets way down. Hunchback. There were a, yeah. Um, Arnold Palmer used to get super hunchback too when he put. Like there's a lot of old people back in the day that used to put super weird. Like now that now that I look at it, like it was weird. Like they all had super bent knees and were like very straight. But yeah, Michelle Wee West with that very very arched, like tabletop style. It's very interesting. 
I think it's, I mean, it definitely works for her. So it's great to have her back. Pretty happy about that. And uh, really happy to see that the LPGA is getting one of its stars back from injury. So that's good. Yeah, I think so that's right good. before. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, we're good. Go for it, Tim. I was just going to say uh, it, uh, with putting and you were just saying it, a lot of people are like, oh, you pull your hands over like whatever, you know, you're putting it all wrong. Putting is all about comfort. And Michelle Wee, I like the what her theory is, is that she is bent over the ball so that she can see right down the pipe, right down her sight line and to as to where the ball's going. She's right over that ball. Right down Broadway. Right down Broadway. That's exactly how Seve putted, though, if you look at it, which is you don't see many guys doing that. And you're so right, Timmy. Putting is so comfort. I mean, if you're not comfortable over putt, get the hell out of here. You got to be comfortable over the putt. You got to be thinking positive. And, uh, yeah, you got to stick to the line. And you got to follow Timmy on TikTok. You got to watch TikTok. You got to learn. You got to um, – I saw something the other day. And I shared it with you, Timmy, I think um brendan that's on me didn't share it with you it's okay but, but. <laughs> no like you always putt i feel like when i read putts you like putt to the apex like obviously the speed like but you got to putt above it like i was watching something you got to put putt above the apex because it's going to hit the apex and keep trickling down is it mm-hmm. there's there's a tiktok on it though but it was cool but putting oh comfort. yeah yep you putt to yep. the back of the hole you don't putt to the front of the hole. You putt to the back of the hole. That's what I was. That's what I was always told, and and I still don't listen. And I always try and putt to the front of the hole because I'm I'm dumb. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, she create. I, I know she didn't like create the tabletop style, but like for the women's game, like she was one of the originators on that side that started putting like that. And there are so many women golfers putting like that now that have come up and it's all because of Michelle Wee West. Like she was a huge trend center in, in the women's game. And it's great to see. Oh, I'm so glad you brought up Michelle Wee West. My good call. Great call on that. So unfortunately now we got to switch back to the Dell technologies though. We still love you, Michelle Wee West come on the podcast anytime you want. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but in tournament style fashion, we will be giving our final four, our na- our championship match, and our national champion, or in this case, our national champion, our Dell Tech match play champion. So if we're ready to go, Michael. Yeah. Um, keep it short and sweet. I got Dustin Johnson coming out of uh, Northwest. I got Abe Answer coming out of Southwest. What a pick. What a pick. Northeast, Kiz, Kev Kiz, go Kiz. Defending champ. And then Southeast, I got Ian Poulter. Got to believe. And then I'll, I'll go a, I'll go answer over Johnson, and I'll go I'll go Kisner over Poulter, and I'm going to take answer as my, my champ. I just want to kind of be a little different and uh, don't want to take a top dog. We are an incredibly pro Abraham answer podcast. So very very happy to hear that you are all about Abraham answer on this one. Tim, would you like to go? Would you like me to go? I'll take a crack at it. So, uh, so I'm, I'm not about the rankings on this. I'm barely paying attention to the ranking because it is such a different event. Um, I'm not going to go by that. I'm going by experience. I'm going by someone who has been lurking, but not, uh, he hasn't really done it. He's, always used to finish i mean two or three years ago he was in the top five week after week in the first group i am taking thomas mr tommy fleetwood i'm going with tommy fleetwood he is in that same group with that bryson is in uh, bryson already has an l so i am in for tommy fleetwood uh, whether he whether he sticks out or not um next group i am going with a man who is experienced master champion Sergio Garcia. I am going with him. He is a mental nutcase, and he, he's playing his opponent right that he will get in his opponent's head, and he will just make that his opponent crazy. I love it. Um, next one, I am going with another experience pick, another uh, person who is always in the mix, always in the mix at the Masters, never one, Louis Us Husen. In, from South Africa, Wusuzen. 
but who's Daisy? It, who's who's it? Eisen? It was Eisen. Who's Eisen? We're saying it like we're German, you know? <laughs> he's South African. He's South African. We're saying it like he's German. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, um, Louis. Oh, Louis. I'm going with Louis who's and he needs a W. He's long overdue. Um, he's he's long overdue. He's got some funny teeth, and I love it. Um, and then last one, we are going to go with where was it? Uh, we're gonna go with uh, Jordan Speed. That's it. I want Jordan Speed to win. That's it. That's a that's pure heart right there. No nothing behind it. <laughs> so I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna say there's some analytical reason why I'm picking him. I just want Jordan. Speed if you to watched win. if you watched Brendan's TikTok, you know that if you're a Web Simpsons <laughs> if you're a Web Simpsons fan, that's just like the average Joe, right, Brendan? That's just like eh. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're just you're 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 an incredibly neutral human being. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. Webb Simpson <laughs> is the definition of a neutral yeah. human being. That they one cracked me, me up. That's an oh, ant I got stick. I got so much hate on that one for not putting in Phil, and I'm just like, he's not even playing on the tour that much anymore. He's on the Champions Tour now, so I put him in on the next one. Um, all righty. So do you have a final and a Natty Champ? Yeah, I want uh, I want Louis Hughes, Susan, and um. Sergio, and I got the two old guys in the final two. You guys think I'm nuts after this one? I'm going. I'm going, Louis Susan. That's right. You heard it here first. South Africa will take home a WGC this week. Let's go, Louis. Oh, Rub your oh, head on your when you're on your way to work. You must be rubbing your head, thinking I'm a real chooch, and that's okay. I'm rooting for this guy. I love gap, Louis with a gap Louis. tooth. Everyone Let's loves go. Louis. Gap tooth. Everyone that's classic. Louis. Oh man, that was great. He, he looks sweet in visors. He 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 looks like he's always happy. He's if I had his swing too. Oh my gosh. Smooth the swing. Turs. Smoothest swing in the PGA by far. Turs. It looks like it's it looks like he's not even trying. Like, how do you get that good without even looking? Like you watch Dustin Johnson or Tony Fee now, and you're just like, oh, they're trying. Like <laughs> Bryson is <laughs> <Yeah>. trying. <laughs> right. yeah. Louis Oost, Louis Oostays and just goes whoop. And it goes 320 yards. I'm like it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to watch. All righty. So now going for me, we're gonna go start off with the Northeast quadrants. I got Dustin Johnson coming out of there as well. I'm a huge DJ guy. I think he's due for a WGC. I know he's won four of them in the past, but I don't care. I think he's due again. I think this is the week he's gonna do it. Coming out of the southeastern quadrant, I am going to have the biggest upset pick I think I've ever had in any type of event, period. I am going. Zalatoris is down there. And my man, Will Zalatoris. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> We're back, Will. We're back, Willie Z. God, I hope you one day listen to this because that was an humble. The fact that they even knew that I was going that way. <laughs> Corn Ferry TC, Maestro TCU right there. Guy? You say he's a TCU guy? No, I think he's an SMU guy. SMU. Yeah, I think he and uh, Br- he and Bryson didn't play together, but I think they went to school together. Oh, he went to – nope, completely wrong. He went to Wake Forest. <laughs> completely incorrect on my part, okay. so I do apologize for that. Will Zalatoris, but – Arnie, We're part of the Z- went to wake. Mm-hmm. We're part of the Z gang over here. This is a Will Zalatoris household. We will stay a Will Zalatoris household. <laughs> oh man, coming out of the Northwest Quadrant, I have another huge pick that is probably not going to happen, but that's okay. I have a South African man that is not named Louis Ustazen. I have Christian Bezadenot coming out of the Northwest Quadrant, 33 overall. I think he's going to have a very big game. I think he's going to have a very big round robin. You know, he's up against Reed, Watson, and Nyman. If he gets through that, I think he's going all the way to the Final Four. Like, no doubts about it. I think he can get through Cantlay or any of those guys pretty quickly. And I don't trust Louis Ustazen in even getting out of there. I think Kuchar probably gets – I think Hoochie Coochie, unfortunately, gets out of that one. So then – we got to watch Matt Kuchar. Oh, God. Okay. All that right, whole, moving uh, on. That whole foursome Brendan tied today. They're, they all tied. Exactly. Toss-up, baby. Any Reed, game. Watson, Neiman, Bazudin out tied, yeah. 
Christian Bezadeno. Remember that name? He was leading the Players' Championship in 2020 when it got canceled. He was six under par. He was going to win that tournament. Anyways, <laughs> Southwestern Quadrant. <laughs> Southwestern Quadrant, I have my man, Xander Schauffele, pulling through. It's not a very... It's not a very big pick, but I'm going to do it because I trust in Xander, and I think this is finally the time he's going to break through. Into my finals, fortunately for the Z man, I do have DJ. Can't can't go against your uh, can't go against your gut, and I'm going to have Shoffley in the final as well because I do think that Xander is is due for this. And then this is a tough pick for me. I think I'm going to go Dustin Johnson. I am going to go Dustin Johnson, but. I think it's going to be close. I think it might be a one up in 18. I think he might barely squeak by against Xander because Xander, when Xander's on, he's one of the best in the world. Not even close. I like oh, it. Oh, man, guys, that was, that was good. That was good. We got a lot done on that one. Great job. I wish, you know, it would be really tough to do DraftKings with that one. And I don't really want to do one for the Puerto Rico or for the Puchacana Open. No I'll offense. I'll save to- my five bucks. I'll save my five bucks. <laughs> we'll play next week for the Valero Texas Open, so that's all that matters. Again, DraftKings, if you want to sponsor us so we can do it free every week, we'll we'll shout you out no matter what. Until then, it's Daily Fantasy. Finally, my favorite part of the show, everyone's favorite part of the show, we have an original golfer poll from the Chooch himself. Mr. Timmy O'Reilly will be asking us one of his famous golfer poll questions, which me and Mike give the wrong answers, and then Timmy tells us what the right answer is. So Timmy, take it away, bud. So I, this is one of those questions. I had a question um, that would take a long time to discuss, and uh, we already had like a, a half of one today, so we'd have two long ones today. So this save is going to be – this we'll save it for next week. And uh, so this one's going to be short, sweet, may know the answer but i really want you to think about this one this actually stems from last week i i knew this question as soon as i asked last week's question where do you want to play more augusta national golf club and you might say what could possibly even compare to that pine valley golf club the number one court ranked course in the world ranked above pebble beach ranked above augusta i know my answer but I'm interested to see. And I don't want, I know that the first answer jumps right at you. I just want you to think real quick. I just want you to think. All right, Brendan. Where do you want to play? Augusta or Pine Valley? Augusta, done. <laughs> there's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. I want to be out there. I want to be able to really tell myself that it's just like I'm in Amen Corner right now. Like I'm, um, playing where they play like this is the part three where jordan spieth always hits it in the water like (laughs) i i know pine valley is probably the best course you know in the world right now and and it's beautiful it's great and it is a damn shame that it is too small to ever host a pga event because it just can't it's just lack of size and everything but i do think unfortunately with the history with everything with being able to say all of the great memories, I, w- I would take Augusta. I like yeah. it. Michael? Yeah, see, see, I don't know Pine Valley enough, and shame on me, but, I mean, you grow up watching Tigers chip in on 16. You grow up watching Amen's Corner and uh, Ray's Creek and – I mean, I I I want to I want to play uh, I want to play hole ten. No, yeah, eleven. I want to play hole eleven and not go in the water on the left. Like I want to keep that ball right. Like I I want to I want to play Augusta pretty bad. Um, and, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's been on TV and the fact that if I tell my my kids one day, hey. I played Augusta National and I shot a 107 from the back tees. I, I, I don't know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, I, if I said Pine Valley to some random person on the street, they don't even, is that in Rehoboth? Is that in Arizona? <laughs> is that in Rehoboth. Australia? I mean, where is oh Pine my God. Valley? 
But shout out Rehoboth, Massachusetts, real quick. Oh, what a what a what a what a name to throw out there, Michael. Good job. It just sounds like a course that would be in a in a very kind of rural area. But Mm -hmm. anyways, now Augusta has got to be my choice. And sorry to drag it out, but there might be some other courses out there that would that would give Augusta a battle. That's for sure. Um, But it's just too much history there and and too much just rich golf, just a lot of a lot of en- golf energy there that would would get me jacked up. Everyone wants that picture on hole 12 when you're walking over, even if you didn't hit the ball well, and even if you hit the ball straight into the water, you want that picture of you walking over that bridge onto the green to the other side. And like, you know, you dropping a ball because you went into the water, but that doesn't matter. See, I'm not a picture guy. I'm not a, I'm not a, let's take pictures to say I was at Augusta. I want to just play Augusta and say, I've played it. Say I've drilled divots off, off a fairway. Say I, say I tried to thread it through the two pine needles on, on 13 where Phil was like, just freaking drop a ball there and be like, I can do this too. And have the ball hit the tree and ricochet me right back. (laughs) But you guys know what I mean. I mean, it's, it's an easy one for me, but I love the question, Tim. And, and this is just awesome stuff. You guys are not crazy. I know you're thinking, I'm thinking, oh, he's going to have some explanation as to why Pine Valley. Augusta fucking <laughs> National Golf Club. Of course, that's the answer. Mike, Thank you me. were speaking, by you explaining that, you were speaking dirty to me by talking about 13 and uh, oh, and 11. I mean, I want to <laughs> hit it to the middle of the green on 16 and have it trickle down to the Sunday pin placement. I want to drive it and be absolutely petrified of the 18th hole shoot that you have to put it through. You know, I, I want to do that. I want to play 15 on Firethorn. I want to put it over the water in two. You know, we can go all day. I'm just romantic about Augusta National. You guys aren't nuts. We're playing the Augusta National. If I obviously would probably will never happen, but let's play Augusta <laughs> National Golf Club. Oh. Brennan, we got it right. Brennan, we got it right. <laughs> we finally got we got it right. That's all that matters. We finally got one right, right? Augusta National. So that's yeah, oh. it's gotta be gotta be there are some others which we can get to another time where where we're really going into it about like courses but that one's going to be augusta national for me yeah we're going to have to leave out augusta national and comparing two courses because it's going to be real tough yeah i don't think i don't think it's ever going to lose um but boys episode three in the books another unbelievable episode if you want to follow us on all social media platforms at Duff and Up Blog on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. It's Duff and Up. Uh, TikTok, which apparently we've become like kind of cool on. Like, cool. We're, we're with the youths of America. Uh, <laughs> we're with the youths of America just doing, doing silly things. Uh, at Duff and underscore up. You can follow Timmy the Chooch on TikTok at Chooch Golf. That's oh. it. I was gonna say I was I was waiting for you to say it, or else I was gonna have to be like Chooch Golf. <laughs> you can now follow Mike on social media because Michael does not believe in social media. No, <laughs> we need it. We need a Twitter guy. We need a guy who's always Mikey. You you want to be the Twitter guy? I can try. <laughs> I can try. <laughs> I'll give you the Twitter account. I don't know. I try with Twitter. Twitter's tough, man. Twitter's Twitter tough. tough. Twitter. Twitter's I want to get on either. TikTok. I want to get on TikTok. I want to. I want to. I want to drill some putts and, and challenge people to get out there and 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 hole everything. I'm so happy to hear that. I'm so happy to hear that. But guys, like, as always, Timmy, we got so something much. to add. Yeah, I just wanted to say to people, I don't know what you guys do about uh, like podcasts and stuff, but uh, we're just a couple of guys who like to talk golf. Um, if you got a, a half hour ride to work our podcasts are usually an hour this one went a little longer i'm sure but uh listen to us both ways halfway you know one time a day or one time a week i mean you know we just uh follow us um you know talk to us you know we want to hear that you're listening we love that and uh yeah um great podcast today boys and uh let's play better and uh can't wait for next week's great ending tim let it fly out there everyone have a great time get on out there We'll, uh, we'll talk to you guys in the- Yeah, there we go. Mike's got one too. Got a boy. Got a boy. Pull everything.
<laughs> That's the one I wanted to hear. Oh, boy. Have a great one, everyone. We really appreciate it. Thank you.